I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today we begin our Vector Portrait Series. This is from the most common request, and you can see in the comments if you follow along, is for Vector Portrait. And I've been working on it to try to break it down step by step. A lot of the videos out there have excellent artists, but it's like, here's a portrait. And they do it from like their decades of experience very quickly in front of you. But in this case, I want to go through it step by step. And we're going to begin with something very simple, the eye, or actually the pupil and the iris. This is going to be a beginner, beginner, intermediate Inkscape tutorial. And I want to feature the Create Tiled Clones tool. If you've never used it, I'll give you the absolute basics first. If you have used it and want to skip to just the good part to make the eye, I'll timestamp that. But first we'll go over the basics and then I'll give you the exact settings so you can make a Tiled Clones eyeball here. If you want to follow along with the exact colors, you can screen capture this color palette. I'll also have the color codes in the description below. In addition, I've had the question before, what is the canvas setting? If you're opening up Inkscape, you'll have a choice on the print tab. I'm going with A4 because I like to work in millimeters. All right, let's begin. Create Tiled Clones Absolute Beginner Settings. What the heck is Create Tiled Clones? Let me show you. So here is an object. If you go to Edit, Clone, Create Tiled Clones, you're going to get a menu out on the sidebar here. So there's a lot of different moving parts, but for today, let's stick with Symmetry, P1, Simple Translation. If you look at the bottom, there's a choice, Rows, Columns. Right now, it's one-to-one. -one. So it's going to replicate this object by as many rows and columns as we say. So let's do four, four. Then down here, Create. There you go. So it created four rows and four columns. Get this one out of the way. And this is the original clone. To show you what it means by tiled clones, if I change the color on the original, so on fill and stroke menu, if you don't have it, it's this paintbrush thing in the corner. With the original selected, I can change it and it's gonna change all the clones together. You can change the color, you can change the sizing, you can move it around and it's going to affect all of them. It's a very good tool to have in your arsenal and we'll probably revisit this in a different tutorial. Let's go to one more beginner setting, adding a shift. I just want to explain this so you can see what's happening here. So here's another object. Let's go back to Create Tiled Clones. On Symmetry, it's still simple translation, but for shift, we're going to tell it to shift every column over by one unit and every row down by one unit. So under every row, we'll shift it down. So Y axis is up and down by 100%, which is one unit. And every column, we'll shift it X axis, left and right, by 100%. Okay, you with me? So we got four rows, four columns, shifting over one unit at a time. Create. And there we go. So let me show you again what just happened to get that extra one out of the way. It's still a clone, so you can change it as you want. We'll go with pink. So we, we have the original went over one unit and went down one unit. So these are the basics for Create Tiled Clones. And now that you're an expert, let's go to the advanced settings. Timestamp. If you skipped ahead to come to the meat of the tutorial, welcome. If you're coming from a future vector portrait tutorial, I'm gonna go over the advanced settings on how to make the pupil and the iris without all the preamble and the basics. Let's get right into it. So you wanna to go to Create Tiled Clones. Symmetry will be P1 Simple Translation. On shift, you're gonna to go to per row, shift Y, negative 100. Per column, shift X, negative 100. Next tab over for scale, you wanna to go to 50% randomize. Rotation, and this is key, because we're gonna be spinning our tiled clones manually, but first we have to make the array with this tool. So per column will be six degrees, randomize 50%. And finally, down to the rows and columns, let's go with one row and 50 columns. Don't push create yet, we still have to make the object. Go ahead and grab the Create Circles and Ellipses tool right here and draw open a flat oval about like that, except that it's pink. The color palette, if you want the color codes, they'll be in the description below. So I'll go to Fill and Stroke, Eyedropper, I'll go with this blue, and I'll take the stroke off by going to Stroke X out of that. Now there's one more technique I have to show you to make this effect work, and it's how to change the rotation point on an object. So if I click off of everything, this is the object. I click on it once, and you see these black arrows. If I click on it a second time, 
there's a hash mark in the center. That's the pivot point. So you can pivot around it as it's in the center, but you can also move that pivot point outside of the object. So I'm gonna draw it over here. That hash mark is now here, and if I pivot, it's gonna go around that point, wherever it may be. So first, let's make it more horizontal. I'll put the pivot point back. And actually, I did realize I put the cloning object at 50% transparency because we're going to create a circular array and create opacity by layering some of the transparency. So back to the object, I'll go to fill, and we'll go to about 50% on the opacity. This is a slider that changes the transparency level. All right, so back to our pivot point. Let's first make it smaller, about like that. And to bring the hash mark back out again, just click on it one more time so you see it. If you hold control, you can draw the hash mark out locked in on the horizontal. So even if I wiggle the mouse up and down, it will not uh, deviate from the horizontal axis, which will be good for this effect here. So right about there. So put the hash mark, just eyeball it roughly. We're going to adjust as we go. And now we can finally go back to create tiled clones to the exact same settings we already did and push create. Not bad. Okay, so it does change every single time because remember, we have two factors that are randomized, but this looks pretty good. I'm going to close the Create Tiled Clones tab because it does force the expansion of the sidebar. We lose some workspace here, so X out of that. Then you can compact it. And let's see what we have here. Zoom out a tiny bit. Let's move our color palette out of the way. And the next step is to group all of this together. So grab in no man's land, make your bounding box around everything. You'll see it all highlight and then control G will group it. Now as one group, I'm gonna click on it one more time to get my handles. So there's another technique to add to your arsenal here. If you are moving an object, rotating it or moving it, you can push space bar and it will stamp onto the workspace that object. This is the method we're gonna to use to make our iris here. So I have my finger on the space bar. I'll start rotating it, just normally not pushing space bar yet. But then listen for the space bar, space bar, space bar, space bar. Just do it as you please until you have it about, maybe I felt like that was like six or eight right there. So now I have this design, almost like a kaleidoscope effect, and I wanna group this whole thing. So grab no man's land and then control G will group that. Since all of that is now together, I'll do control D, which will duplicate it. And I can take the duplicate and bring it over here, hold control and shift together and reduce the size there because I want an inner ring to layer on top of this larger ring. Just like that. To create more of a darker inner ring, I'm gonna grab one of the smaller ovals, which I know is that smaller ring. I get my handles again, and same thing. I'm gonna hold my finger on the space bar and start to rotate and just give, that was just two, let's get this out of there. Just two, maybe three, see how you feel. I'll move this out of the way and let's create more of defined circle back here and add a background. So I'll go back to the Create Circles tool, Shift and Control, let's bring it open. I want a hard line around the perimeter and blurring in towards the center. So first, let's go back to full opacity on this. We'll go with this darker blue. Control D will now duplicate this, so it's a circle on top of a circle. Let's change the color to the lighter blue here, so eyedropper, lighter blue. Bring it in slightly and we'll add a blur to this lighter blue. Maybe we go 16, 15, that's about good. From there, Control D will duplicate that. Shift and Control will bring it down evenly as we reduce it, we'll make that one full white. And now that I can see it, bring it up against, closer to the perimeter of the lighter blue and blur it some more right there. Let's group this whole thing together, Control G. Over here is hierarchy. I want it on the very bottom to slide underneath here. So bottom, and let's bring it underneath. I think I just walked into a pun. I eyeballed that pretty close, but that's too much on the nose, so we'll leave that there. Resize a tiny bit, and let's add a pupil. So back to circles, ellipses, shift and control. Can't see anything because it's white. Let's go black. I want slight opacity on this one, so maybe we'll bring it to 90 and a little bit of a blur, maybe 10. Hierarchy should be on top because I just made it. There it is. Center it up, Control D will duplicate that. I want this one to be no blur and full opacity and reduce it just ever so slightly. <laughs> it's looking at me. Now, if you're a perfectionist, you wanna get this perfectly centered. Let's grab the inner pupil, the blurred pupil. Control G will group that to one object. 
if you hold shift and then go to your most outer darker circle, you've got the two together now. If you go up to your align and distribute menu, which is this bar graph thing, click there. It gives you a lot of choices on how to center things. So we're gonna align relative to last selected. So it's gonna take this group relative to that group and we'll center it up horizontally and center it up vertically. It moved it ever so slightly, but maybe it was worth the extra step. Okay, finishing touch. I wanna to add a bit of a glare. So let's go back to our favorite tool, the circles and ellipses, hold shift and control. I need a circle, control D. I'll change that to any random color. This will be our clipping shape right about there. I want a curved glare. So first I have to make the shape for it. So I'm gonna knock out the center here of this bigger circle. I'll grab the outer circle, hold shift, get the inner circle path difference. That knocks that part out. Now you can make your glare any way you want. When I looked at some reference photos, you can actually see a picture of whatever is bouncing off of the eyeball, but we'll just do a stylized version here. So grab your Bezier pen tool and we'll just make a random shape like so. And I wanna add a trailer to that one. So I'll make another shape next to it. And the two of these are gonna become the clipping shape for my ring here. So to do that, I've got one selected, hold shift, get the other one, path, combine. That will make one unified clipping piece. I can then hold shift, get my ring, path, intersection, and I've got my glare, but it's black. Eyedropper, I cheated, I had it ready over here. It should be on top because of hierarchy, we just made it. Let's bring it into place. Hmm, for some reason, the opacity went way down. Let's bring the opacity up until it looks like it's an eyeball looking back at you. And if you're gonna use this in a project, I would then group everything. One of the reasons we made that background circle was so there is full opacity, even though there's, there's a lot of transparency in here. Control G will group it. And we've got an I just for kicks, Control D. And now we have two eyes. And there we go. So hopefully we can use this in future vector portrait tutorials. If you have questions on any of the steps or suggestions for other things we can do, let me know in the comments and thanks. Thank you.